I ended up making out a list because a list was needed. <laughs> I'm gonna go over this. For part one, I did the top three tips for getting into homesteading and living a self-sufficient lifestyle. Uh, in the second part, I did the unexpected. And one thing I forgot about in the unexpected that's kind of important is make sure that you have an emergency cash fund. An emergency cash fund sufficient to cover anything that might be an emergency. As an example, your hot water heater could go out, your furnace could go out, your air conditioning could go out, your pipes could freeze up. You know, all of these things are examples of things that are unexpected. Your transmission could go out of your car or truck. The engine could blow up. All of these are high dollar items. So when you are doing your budget, and I'll get more into that in a little bit, make sure that you have an emergency fund so that if something unexpected comes up that you are able to cover that cost because there's nothing more stressful than to be spending all your money on your homestead to do the things you want to do and suddenly your transportation is gone and you can't don't have the money to fix it or it's winter time and the heat went out in your house that's all stuff you don't really want to have happen to you I talked a little bit about the plan and the budget in the first part I want to go a little bit more into it because I did it a specific way and I mentioned that a lot of people asked me if I had heard of Dave Ramsey and I really hadn't until so many people asked me and I finally looked into it and I said oh you know he kind of does something similar to the way I did it but I did it different you know I I had a plan my plan was I was going to get into homesteading, be self-sufficient, become debt-free in a certain amount of time, six years. That, that was my goal. And the property I bought was never a homestead, so I was basically starting from scratch. So what I did was, as far as planning and budgeting, and this is hard for a lot of people to do, because I found out talking through other people the last couple years, most people don't have a budget for like their daily, <laughs> like their daily, their checks come in, they spend money when they're broke. I guess they think that we stop spending till the next check comes in. Um, so with my budget, basically what I did, I've got a spreadsheet goes by pay period. So since I get paid uh, twice a month, my pay period, my spreadsheet is based on that pay twice a month. So uh, the first check, I have all the bills that are due on a spreadsheet, what they cost, the, how much my check is. So there's total income, total bills. I subtract the total bills from my total income. That gives me some surplus amount. From that surplus amount, I have to know how much money am I going to spend for food? How much money am I going to spend for gas? How much money am I going to spend on the homestead? And how much money am I going to put in my emergency savings fund and I'll tell you the way that I did it was I broke it down into three categories yep. spider on me I broke it down into three categories and it worked out really well what kind of spiders sucker I'll kill you I don't care <laughs> so I broke it down into three categories um, I had my income my total bills those were not any of the three categories Income, total bills, my bills are on auto pay, never had to worry about them, always made enough money to cover them, even though some of them fluctuate up and down, like electric, you know, is one cost in spring, one cost in summer, one cost in fall, one cost in the winter, and if winter was bad, it could be sky high cost. But I broke it into three categories. So once, once all my bills were paid, 25% of whatever was left over went into my savings account. So I just take my income minus my bills. That gave me a value. Let's say there's $100. That meant that 
on the first paycheck of the month, 25% of $100, $25 went into my savings. Make sense? That's things I wanted to do like fruit trees, garden, chickens, rabbits, goats, bees, you know, the things I wanted to add to the homestead that I wanted to do. And then 50% of that $100 went toward my get out of debt. And so that meant that 50, you know, if there was $100 left over, basically $50 on the first paycheck of the month got paid extra towards something like a credit card or a bank loan or something like that. When I did my debt, I did it with whatever I was paying the highest percentage except for the house. The house went to the bottom of the list. So as an example, if and I'll just use figures, it's easy to understand. If I had a credit card that had a hundred dollars on it and is a 24% interest, that meant every month I was basically being charged $24 a month in interest. But if I had another credit card that was a thousand dollars balance at 10% interest, that meant that credit card was, you know, a hundred dollars a month in interest. So I sorted them by the interest amount, not the percentage, but the actual interest amount highest to lowest. And that's the order that I paid my debt off and didn't matter. I didn't matter what kind of debt it was any debt. So the only debt that I have right now is my house and I paid off on $127,000 worth of debt in three years, three years. Uh, that was credit cards, loans for cars, trucks, ATVs, boats, motorcycles, what, you know, whatever. Now, um, what happens is you might start out. So when you're starting out to do this planning and stuff and you're budgeting and you're budgeting for, you know, you should do a year in advance and fine detail. Like this is what I want to get done this year and come up with a pretty good estimate of what it costs. And if you don't have the money to do that, don't take that money out of your emergency fund because I promise you it will come back to bite you in the butt. Don't take that out of your savings. Don't take it out of your emergency fund. Don't. Don't borrow from Peter to pay Paul. I promise you, you'll regret it because you'll get into that habit of doing that and you'll never get out of debt and you'll never have the money to do what you want to do. It's just a bad road to go down. So don't do it. Goals. I kind of touched on this already when I was just talking about budgeting. The way that I do it is I did a detailed plan for the next year and I've got saved. I did it. Everything was in a spreadsheet. Spreadsheets have run my life for the last six years. If my spreadsheet said I couldn't do it, it didn't get done. But what I did was I put a detailed plan for 12 months what I was going to do over the next 12 months or basically I was starting about November to plan what I was going to do for the next year, but I would be using like from my longer plan and we'll get in that in a minute. So I would look at what didn't, why, what did I not get done the previous year? Maybe I didn't get something done and that will carry over into the new year that I'm planning. And I would come up with a detailed like, and when I mean detailed, let me give you an example. Um, for the chicken coop and run, I determined what my cost of materials was and I priced it at three different places. And if one place had cheaper two by fours and another place had cheaper plywood, I bought from the cheapest places. I wasn't going to buy from one place and if five miles down the road, someone else had it cheaper. Unless it was only a couple of cents difference and I was just going to waste the gas. But you kind of get what I'm saying because I'm not going to just go buy everything at Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever because it's convenient. 
I'm going to price shop so that I get the best price. Um, so you want a detailed goal for the next 12 months. So I have materials and then I figured in the cost of waste because you know, you, you might need an eight foot two by four or a seven foot two by four, but you got to buy an eight foot one to, to get that eight foot seven foot two before. So there's always some waste. There's always some overhead. Um, and then I would pad that figure slightly. Because there's money involved, like gas and time to go pick it up, like all that stuff has a cost. And, you know, you don't want to budget $1,500 on a chicken coop and you got to drive 50 miles to get the material in a truck that takes you four trips because now you've just wasted a, at least a tank of gas and maybe two tanks of gas. And if you didn't budget for that gas, in the cost of that chicken coop, maybe you couldn't go get the last load. <laughs> you, it's crazy how things work out sometimes. All right, so you got your short-term goal, which is the next 12 months. That's what we're going to get accomplished this year. Maybe it had some stuff that carried over from the previous year. Um, and then you want a longer plan, like 5 to 10 years or 15 years or 20 years. That's just basic notes. And the reason being, let me give you an example. Let's say that I budgeted for the next 12 months and man, great weather and plenty of money. And I got everything done in say July and that I thought was going to take all year. And now suddenly I've got you know six or seven months of free time. So I could look at next year, like what's on next year's goals. And, oh, I can bring this over because I've got enough money to do that. And that'll put me ahead for next year. So see, it, it sounds complicated, but it actually works out pretty well. It's a nice system. And it may just, you know, most of the stuff I did out here was pretty smooth. It was always funded. Time constraints because of weather and things like that fluctuated. But it's pretty smooth. Considering I started with nothing, got everything I've got now in six years, and nearly 100% reached my goals because I'm down to one debt, which is the house. So it is doable. Um, so we just covered the detailed goals for the next 12 months, long-term goals, whatever time period you feel. I actually did um, a five years, a six years, a 10 year. And I knew I was going to be everything done between six and 10 years. Like I didn't think I'd get it done in six. Technically I've been here five years and some months. So six years will be this October. I'm not going to get the house paid off this year because I kind of overspent on some things. That's something you got to watch too. Um, so I'll be close. I'll be between six and seven years by the time the house is paid off, but that was on a 15 year note. So I'm still paying it off, saving a fortune and in interest. 